futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Well, good day, everyone. Ira Epstein of Linen Associates with your metals market update. And this is for Monday, the 4th of December, 2017, getting on to 2.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Well, was it more of the buy the rumor, buy the first piece of news in the stock market, and then late in the day you're getting back down to unchanged in the S&P, just off the low of the day, only up 100, giving up nearly a 100-point gain in the Dow, down nearly 70 points now, in fact, 70 lower in the uh, NASDAQ and the Russell getting hit. So maybe it's time for some money to come off from the markets wouldn't surprise me but then we walk into Tuesday reversal so you always got to think about that also notice how the energies are getting hit right here and that was more of the buy the rumor sell the fact as the OPEC meeting came and went and they got just what they wanted the market hasn't looked north since then now when you come to the metal markets I know I did an interview early this morning Dow Jones Wall Street Journal and they were asking me what I thought. And I said, you got to pay attention to two numbers right now. And those numbers are the 100-day average of closes, which I think super important. I'm sorry, 200-day, not the 100. Super important, a long, long-term number. And what the dollar, of course, is doing, and then the Bollinger Band. So let's go to the charts, and you can see what I'm talking about. The first thing is, on the weekly chart, the market is what? It's in a down thrust. It's in a downtrend on the weekly charts. You've got a clear case of lower highs, lower lows. You're under the 18-day average of closes. So any way you want to look at it, I welcome you to. But on this chart, you'd have to get back over this 1300 area to negate that. Not saying it can't be done. I'm saying right now it hasn't done it. When we go to a daily chart with today's action, you've got a look of a lower highs. You've had the lower and lows. You're under the 18-day average. So what I use the daily area chart for is a visual about where I am. That's all I want to know from it. This, these are the charts I look at. I start going to the bar charts. And on the bar charts, I see a market that's been caught in this range here and caught in this range here. So let's call it the 1270 to 1305 level recently that on the Feb gold, the market's been caught in. When I put on my swing line study, this is the same chart without it. This is the swing line. It's one of the studies I teach in my charting course. You've got a pattern of lower highs and you've got lower lows. We don't know where this low is going to end up. It could be lower tomorrow or if the market takes out today's high, it, that might be it. And the market has then a different pattern. But right now the pattern's that. What's the risk associated with being short? Well, to break this pattern, you'd have to take out 1292.50. So to me, swing lines give me an idea of risk associated with the current area. So it's about $14 away. Now I put on the moving averages. For those of you that, that have been reading the gold reports when I write them, I've been writing that the 200-day moving average is a big-time number and one that the market is looking at. If I go further back on the chart, you'll even see it back there. 200 days of closing prices is almost a business year. So that's why so many traders look at it. That does not mean it magically goes down to it and has to turn up. But because the market is under the 100-day average, and if you'll notice on Friday, you rallied up to it, failed, and within 24 hours, you're back down to the 200-day, there seems to be a battleground that is shaping up right here. Close under 1273.10, and where might you go? Because you've got to view the market as in a downtrend here. Lower highs, certainly the lower lows, trying to hold on to support. The next potential support is the Bollinger Band at 1272.20. So we are in a zone where the market is, number one, in a downtrend. It hit its first supports on a couple of t days ago. Now it's trying to do it again. And momentum is down, but in oversold territory. None of this is bullish, but it could be enough reason for the market to get a bounce. Got it? I don't see anything on this chart bullish at this point in time. 
when you look at the difference between December gold and silver, and you shouldn't trade the Ds, but because they're still active, I keep them up. You, March is where you should be. You can get delivery if you're in the Decembers. Well, the difference is up to 78, 76, which means one thing that the gold market is still stronger than the silver market. You need more ounces of silver to buy an ounce of gold. And you see on the silver chart, the weakness of this is the market's driving itself down. Now, the lower Bollinger Band number is literally right here at 1635.60. I don't know where it closed today. I forgot to take a look at it before I'm shooting the video. I'm watching this. Is the market going to embed? Both numbers today are under 20. They are not that way on Friday. You got a 20 reading. You have an oversold market stretching itself out against the lower Bollinger Band that has just collapsed. It's gone from approximately the 1730 area and it failed on its try to get up and over the 200 day average. And it's gone into a state of collapse, falling in essence a dollar an ounce since that point in time. In the copper market, copper is in a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now, it can flip-flop and turn friendly by just taking out 312.50 because that could leave you with higher lows and higher highs. You are oversold. So the danger is for the bear. Even though the trend is down, you're in oversold territory. Where are you going to go? The second problem is the market seems to be fighting against the 18-day average right now looking for a direction. When we come to the platinum chart, if we come back over here on Friday, the markets had a, set up a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Prior to that, you actually had higher lows and higher highs, I believe. You broke through that Friday. If that pattern's going to hold, you look for the potential of the lower Bollinger Band. And with momentum pointing down, the odds gave the the market's what? The momentum being there, but because you closed over the 18-day average, these two fight each other. You don't quite know where you're at. Today it was answered when you opened lower and the market's making its dive towards that number. So I'm looking for 922.40 to act as something of the first support. It's important to also notice the 100-day average along with the upper Bollinger Band did stop this market. So on the way up, these two moving averages gave you an idea of problems that were setting up. You entered a downtrend in palladium now. You've now got the lower highs, lower lows. You closed under the 18-day average. To negate this, you've got to get back up over 1018. You've got to close over the 18-day average in order to at least turn the bias, which is now down, back to up to negate the downtrend here. But momentum has really kicked in. So in looking at the market, I'm looking for the 970 level. Here's the momentum, and that's what I was reaching to show, how easy it's just turned itself down. In the dollar index, the dollar index is in a downtrend. However, momentum is trying to turn up, and that's why instead of 90, I'm just instead of 80, I'm showing you that. Just want you to get an idea how it's trying to turn up, and you can see where the battle is. It's the 100 day average of closes. That's an important uh, number for here. Also, the markets and currencies typically stay within Bollinger Bands, and this is doing a nice job. So let's assume that instead of the downtrend holding, it keeps uh, working its way out of that. Both numbers would have to be over 30 to not be oversold. Let's assume to do that, you have to rally a little. Even if you take out 93.46 and a half, you're under the 18-day average, which is waiting for you at 93.58 and a half. The game turns bullish if you close over 93.58 and a half, and it stays bearish as long as you don't take out 93.46 and a half with the caveat. You're already oversold, and you're at a major support zone, so you have to be a bit cautious right there. You know, I talk about these things that I do, and I, I make it sound, and I realize it sounds is fairly simple and it should be. What I learned years ago, if you take charting courses and all, the more complicated they are, the less useful they are. When you create a charting course, and I've done them, I want to give you an idea on my charting course. I think this is over the years, how many have I created in different ways? Probably seven or eight, maybe more, over a 30 year period or more. That's pretty long. And what I learned is 
Each step's like a domino. It builds on the next. You put that on the court. Can I tie the three into the four? What, what, which way can I build on it? So I start with swing lines explaining what a trend is and the risk associated with the trend. I'm then going to build from that and I'm going to put onto the for you moving averages. And the reason is moving averages filter my swing lines, but how do you use them becomes the key. So that's going to be very important as you work with it. And there's several that I use. Slow stochastics. I want to know is momentum pointing up, down, is it locked into a trend or is it just staying trendless? Then I go to my old friend Bollinger Bands, an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within them 95% of the time with twists and turns. Because if a market locks onto and stays on an upper Bollinger Band or a lower Bollinger Band, how do you tie it in with momentum to say, ah, this thing's really kicking? What about other profit-taking tools? Because I use window envelopes. You know, some people use pivot points. I find these pretty consistent too, window envelopes, and I've been using them for a long time, so I give you an idea how to work with those. You tie the whole thing together, it's five different indicators. I promise if you have a 16-year-old at home, they're going to get it. They're gamers today. They're going to get this. And that's what it is. I teach you to remove the name on the chart. So in the course, I write about markets twice a day typically. You're going to get that. You're going to get access to my morning video, which by itself, my subscription service for research, $60 a month. The charting software, $99. I throw the whole package together for you for $79.95 for you to give yourself a try with this. The full videos, everything's online, by the way. Everything's automated for you. We can even... Send somebody a, a gift from you, whatever, whatever way you want to go. Do you have to start the course right now at Christmas? No, you can buy it now, take advantage of the pricing because it's going to go up in 2018. That's a guarantee. That's not a price prediction. It's a guarantee. I'm raising the price. So I'm raising the price, giving you a discount off the uh, $79.95. I think it's a pretty darn good value for Christmas time. How do you get it? Okay. You can either call my staff, they'll handle it right on the phone for you, and they'll start it when you're ready. You can go online, buy it, just write us a note anywhere. We will pick up on it. We'll also call you after you buy the course and get you all set up, and you can decide when you want to start that. You can click up here if you're watching me on YouTube. Click that form. It'll take you right to the page you need, and yes, we have a fax page and everything on our new website that really teaches you a lot about the course, what you're getting yourself into, how easy, I think it is easy, to learn these steps. And from there, you have the building blocks to take it wherever you want to go. In the meantime, I'm I Rapstein. I thank you for watching. The code word when you buy it, you're going to need it, is Christmas with an X. X-M-A-S. That's what gets you the discount. I'm Ira. Thanks for watching.